Hello, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so now we have to, we are good afternoon here, but it's good morning for you. It's good morning for me. Uh, I just finished teaching a class and then trying to switch over was difficult. Oh, um, oh, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I just thought maybe I didn't inform you correctly or yeah, no, kind of no good. problem. <laughs> it's, it's all technical. It's all technical. Yeah. So you'll be happy you're here. I think it's a uh, Kyungin will come in in a few minutes. Okay, great. And so we are moving on with our side event. Today yeah, it's so exciting. It's very good because you'll be speaking among so many important people and listeners, also speakers and listeners. Today we got the embassy on board also, the Philippine embassy. Oh, she great. The ambassador, she's very new. She only came beginning of April. Very nice lady. I, I just saw her photo, but I was there and talked with the secretary and she's ready to give opening remarks. Yeah. Oh, that's so. fantastic. So she will definitely be listening to you because you're the next speaker then after her. No, she will take time to listen because it's a, the Philip, yeah, she's interested in this project. And we also will try to meet her uh, maybe even before the conference to have a better contact with her. So shall we wait for Kyung in? I don't know, she said 10 minutes. Oh, really? Okay. Give me just a second. I'm going to try to put my earbuds in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just take your time and breathe in and breathe out <laughs> after giving a class. Good advice. Good advice. So many times we breathe out in our life, but then forget to breathe in. There we go. Okay, good. So that sounds like a really good, really good connection. We have some nice music also. <laughs> oh, I'm outside of a French, it's a French cafe, bakery cafe. Ah. So I had this class, but my daughter and her husband are visiting. So they, they took my car. So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm stranded. <laughs> My sister got married on Saturday. Mm -hmm. so we had a big wedding. So my family is quite large. I have six brothers and sisters. And oh. so there's, there's uh, lots of nephews, nieces, great nephews, great nieces. It's, it's a wonderful to get everybody together and quite rare these days. Yes, I have so many siblings in our age group. It's not so frequent anymore. Yeah, or your age group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's nice to hear because big family is nice. It's very nice. Huh? Was it her first wedding? A wedding of the sister. Eh? Yeah, my sister. Yeah, her first husband died, so she got married again. Mm. And uh, yeah, it was just, it was really wonderful, beautiful experience. Mm. We had like about 40, 45 family members. <laughs> awesome. Okay. We're going to a wedding on Saturday. My husband's sister's getting married on Saturday. Oh, is that right? Yeah, which is also amazing. She never married. And uh, mm. my husband is one, is the middle of five kids. He's got two older brothers who married and two younger sisters who didn't. And this is, it's a long-term relationship. And they're actually getting married in, in the church, which we were surprised because he was, they were, they've been together a long time and he was married before. So they were legally married in January, but now they actually want to have a church wedding. Mm. Um, and um, that's quite unusual here in Austria. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's only going to be very small because they're actually, they're very close to all of our family, but only my husband and I are invited and none of the kids. So because I want to keep it so small, but it's amazing. It's, a great it's beautiful. It's very nice, yeah. Yeah, we need we need more celebration of family. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> like, yes, absolutely. Yep. So uh, maybe um Patrick, we will we do start because I do not know how fast Kyungin will come in. Okay. 
because maybe your time is also limited and somebody else's time also. So um, actually, you first we thought you want to exp to share some of your experiences of your workshop as in two weeks ago now or something like that. Yeah, two weeks. Um, yeah, it was it was quite amazing. We had people fly in from different parts of the country, and um, we had we ended up having two sets of sixteen workshops, wow. which just covered a range of things, you know, topics for for fathers, for men, for families. Um, it was just a, it was, I mean, it was what I wanted it to be, which is informative like where people are really learning learning things um, and then also really getting inspired about the significance of fatherhood and then also getting tools getting resources so we we accomplished those three things which was um really significant and it, it also really made me think again too about you know father khan why you know, like the 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 name for it because i had to explain many times so it, it uh it kind of really made things solid in my mind, which is really, it's the con, which is I think the, the lie, and that's kind of on a personal level. Like we get we get deceived by what's really gonna make us happy as men, as, as human beings, and we end up making choices that end up causing us to feel shame and broken and, and to where we end up losing our families. We lose the things that are most important to us. So then the con is kind of the individual level. And then the conversation is, you know, a conversation between husband and wife and between parents mm -hmm. and children. Like, how do we talk mm -hmm. honestly? How do we how do we create relationships that are that are honestly intimate um, so that everyone can then can then feel supported, known, understood, loved in the deepest possible way? And then conference is then how do we make that social? How do we make that something that influences the world around us? So. It, it really became much more clear in my mind that this is this is what Father Khan is about. That we are that we're dealing on an individual level, on a on a couple and family level, and then how do we spread that into the the community at large? And uh, so part of part of that was we gave the Heart of the Father Award. Um, mm -hmm. So we we did it the the last conference, and and then this one, I had two people fly in. One man, uh, an Indian, an Indian man who was trafficked. Um, who was trafficked into America. Let's see, I lost being able to see you. Um, so he and his family were actually trafficked into America in a labor trafficking situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, incredible, like he, the guy hired a hitman to kill him when he got, got away from the trafficker. And very, very dramatic story. And then he was brought in by President Obama and then, and then kept through Trump as a um, advisor for the National Advisory Council on Human Trafficking for America. Um, but just an amazing man, incredible advocate and just active around the world in, in trying to help give support and draw attention to, to what's happening with trafficking. So we gave an award to him and his wife and his two sons came mm -hmm. with him. And, uh, and he said he's been publicizing it around the world, all through India and, and across America. You know, he said he told me that of all the awards, all the recognition he's gotten in his life, this was the most important, was being recognized for having the heart of the father. Um, and then the other guy that we gave, that we gave two other awards. One was to Jeff Brodsky, who's, who's been working on fighting human trafficking for over 40 years. And um, kind of he's, he's done undercover work up, up close and personal, and then a lot of training around the world. But he's he's been barefoot for eleven years in solidarity with with you know poor children who get preyed upon around the world. Um, so it was it was just so these awards were and one other award for a local man who's who's done a lot like within his own family and community. But we really wanted to recognize people who are you know taking taking their role as father really seriously. For, the, for their own family, but then also what that means for the world around them, that they, that they carry that heart as a father into the world. So we, we had those three awards, which was very, very inspiring to people. Um, and then the, the workshops. So we had workshops on such a broad range of, of topics, everything from legal rights to, um, you know, maintaining finances to being financially responsible for a family, um, what to do as a single parent, 
looking at, at, at the understanding of manhood and masculinity um, and what what how to make how to make our concept of that healthy and wholesome for the sake of the family and um, and then we had human trafficking specific talks uh, we had survivors who spoke about their experiences like with or without their fathers um, we had we had, of course we concentrated quite a bit on porn and also on mentorship um, so it, it was just it was just really inspiring it was just an incredibly informative um, experience and really uplifting for everyone so already so many people have jumped on they all want to kind of make it bigger and and really expand it for next year and i want to do two more two more events um, leading up to the next like big conference so i want to do one that'll highlight highlight pornography and then one that'll um, more focus on human trafficking and, and how fathers play a role in that and how we can prevent it um, so but it'll be more really targeted to that topic mm. so those are two things that will be coming up so how will you what will you say in eight minutes <laughs> this is a big it challenge is very difficult it's very <laughs> difficult but i think i don't know what the others say but i think if you if you draw if you if you come from uh, a base your basis is their experience with this last conference and you touch on the different topics, then they everybody will get very excited and wanting to join the next conference. Yeah. I think this is so, the so, practical, this, you know, how, how, what you did, yeah? Maybe very briefly how you came to do this in a few sentences, because of your experience with trafficking and the realization that the, the role of fathers is not, many men are fathers, but not competent fathers. I mean, the same is true for women, but you are, as a father, true. you are, this is your topic, yeah, naturally. Well, because I think I think fathers have fathers. The, the problem the problem with fathers now is that, like with, um, th there's there's kind of a lower expectation when when you talk about the, the it's mostly the mother who shapes the children's character and the the development of the child is mostly the responsibility of the mother, and I think that's that kind of started in the 60s very strongly there was just a strong emphasis that the father wasn't really that important for our childhood development and and I think we're, we're so a lot of men stepped down into this lower expectation of them and that's brought about tremendous problems socially mm -hmm. you know the criminality violence drug drug abuse teenage pregnancies all these things can be can be in some way related to to absent or distracted or abusive fathers. So I think if we get if we get fatherhood right, like really looking yeah. at the, the true role of the father and how influential they are, we, we, ch we change an awful lot of the ills of society. You know, when you talk well like that, then everybody will believe it's three, three quarters of the problem you will have solved if the fathers understand who they are. I think it's very that, yeah. exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting yeah, to realize actually that I think yeah. it's 50-50. It's, it's it's both are important, yeah. But, but, well, but yeah, I think one are. of the things too, one thing that's really important is that if you're a better father, it's going to be a better husband. Yeah. And and there there needs to be like much more support between, you know, as a couple. And so if, and if you take your responsibility as a father seriously, then you have to take your responsibility as a as a spouse seriously. And so it 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 has a lot of implications. I think you're right because uh, many women say, I do it alone. I make it alone. Yeah. So many, many women are uh, alone and raising their kids, but they cannot manage it. Uh, we see this. And so to find the right balance and to, um, how to say, würdigen, was heißt das? Dignity. Uh, to give each other the dignity and um, the respect and um, to show an example that it's working best if the both parents work together, not against each other. Yeah, even even in the cases of divorce, and I think that's the thing where they're, you know, you for the sake for the sake of the children, you have to, you know, take take your relationship with each other, even even in a divorce situation, mm -hmm. but you have to take it seriously, and because the children are children are going to assign meaning to their experience and, and what they're seeing. I mean, this is the thing that's just so, it's so exciting and so frightening at the same time, but just how, how 
you know, children, children learn their place and their values through observing and imitating their parents. And the things that the things that will impress them as being really important and really valuable are coming from their parents, what they see in their parents. And so if, if the father is just obsessed with making money, if that's his whole life, then money's more important than me. And, and so there's a lot that we're communicating, you know, through our, through our behavior, you know, individually and then as couples, that's really affecting children, like how they feel about themselves and life in general, love. So, I, I, yeah, it is extremely important. And, and I think women have been pushed into this position where they, they've taken on a lot, a lot more than they, than they should. And I mean, when I first, when I first talked about father kind, I got so much pushback from, from single mothers because a lot of the people in the human trafficking world are single mothers. And, and they were like, you know, if, if you're saying that the father is really important, then you're saying that I did a bad job. I was like, no, 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 that's not at all the point. You know, that somehow you as a, as a woman can't successfully raise a child, but children need the balance. And, and it's, and so do, and so do we, I mean, for one person to take on the role of raising children is extremely difficult. And it's, it's not something that should be glamorized or aspired to. And I think that's, that's kind of what happened with a lot of TV shows. They, there was a, you know, denigration of the stay home mom. There was an elevation of the, of the career single mom. And that became something to aspire to. And, and that I think is unfortunate for society. Yeah, yeah. so how, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Uh, just I want to say it needs um, a whole cha um, change of mindset of the society. Because the society goes down and down and more drugs and crime and all kind of things. But uh, they don't want to see the root causes. And um, so the family need to be protected by by the politician, by religious fields, by the academicians. So need to change the whole mindset of, in the society, I think. And so, so I think therefore it's very important that we do these things. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, you know, and I think a, a lot. Yeah, I think I think if because mothers are being stuck with the with the raising of the children, and and that's just so not fair. I mean, a couple of the people that spoke were fathers who really really fought to keep custody of their children because because of the problems with the spouse, and and the courts and everything were really against the father. I, we had one man there. He's been taken to court over five hundred times by his ex wife like blocking him from seeing his children. She would bring up anything in order to make problems for him so that he wouldn't be able to be in the lives of his children because she was resentful towards him. So then that, that it just turned into such a massive problem and, and really like, like taints the children. So it was really, really unfortunate. I think that there, there, there has been not enough recognition within the courts of how important the two are um, and so that, that needs to change. And then politics supporting the education of boys to become responsible men and fathers is really critical. So it's being done in a smaller scale. I think an awful lot of people are looking at the data and going, yeah, if we, if we screw up with boys, you know, we, we make a, a huge mess of our families in the future. So. I think it's yeah, important for the woman too, so that we, uh, how, how to say, to, to, to raise awareness to the woman, um, because women can be very unfair to men. If they are hurt, yeah. or they want to get back and fight, of course. Right. And right. Uh, I think uh, some men, it's really unfair to, to them. Women can be very unfair to them, to the men or to fathers, yeah. I've heard that from a lot of African American men in America, that that women women make it so difficult for their husbands that eventually they'll just leave. Um, so it's it works both ways, but but 
that came up in many conversations. One one guy that I know, he's writing a book now on on what's happened within the African American family, and it, and it's complex and it, with roots back to slavery. You know where where you know the husbands and wives were kept apart. You had anyway. There's there's a lot there's a lot of history there. Um, but it is really true that there are there are some women who make it extremely difficult for the husband, even if he's a really good guy, to be able to stay and and to feel appreciated. So that's why, like with Father Khan, um, we've never made it like a men's only event. It's it's for men and women, but it really centers around the significance of fatherhood, and women need to understand the role of the father just as much as men do. So it's. I, mean, I think that's one thing that's that's always been really important is that we that we have a common a common understanding as men and women of the significance of fatherhood. So it's it's not just one sided. You know, it's all to respect each other. Mm -hmm. Lily, do you want to say something? You have a comment? Yeah, I think the whole gender issue today has really focused on women in that mm. point of gender and promoting equality meaning raising the woman and women have been raised to such an extent that the focus is on putting men down and there's mm. not even a consciousness of a of a cooperation and a working together and i think yeah that's right at the un we need to bring in that other aspect because even though at the UN we do not yet have parity, we don't have a majority of women, still the women that are there are, are all power women and many of them divorced and well off because they're earning enough money and they can have their children and, and use the kindergarten and, and have their babysitters and to have zero tolerance, respect or understanding for the situation that men are in and there needs to be a, a readjustment of consciousness and respect for one another. Yeah, that's the only thing that's going to make things really work is when there's is when there's that kind of mutual respect and understanding of of, of our differences and our strengths and how much we really need each other. Absolutely. Um, and our children need us, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's yeah, things have become so imbalanced. And I think that's one thing that really um, that I find difficult about the, the Biden administration is that it swung so heavily to kind of a more progressive view of everything as, as women and transgender and, and, and that area is, is receiving all the focus. And they've really like just dismissed men and, and fatherhood. Mm -hmm. So it, it, that's going to be extremely detrimental. It feels almost like we have to raise fathers as the new disadvantaged minority, even though they're not really a minority, they're just underrepresented. Yeah, well, you can't say that in very many places. Exactly. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. Yeah. There are some interesting voices. There's um, Warren Farrell. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he He's a fascinating man. He, he, I talked to him because I wanted him to speak at FatherCon, but he, he charges too much. Um, but he was, he was a, a elected and, and part of the National Organization of Women in New York twice uh, because for his, his feminist views. And that he really felt that there, that there needs to be kind of an equality to come about between men and women. But then he said, after a while, it got to where the feminist agenda became really harmful to children. It was like, really, what's good for women, even at the expense of children and families? And so he kind of drew the line there and he said, this is not, this is not healthy. And so then he kind of disconnected from the National Organization of Women. Um, but he talks, a, he talks a lot about the, the, you know, like what's happened with men, that you have all of this support for the rights of women, the, the support for women with nothing equal on the other side for men. So men are no longer necessary financially. They're no longer necessary, you know, on so many levels. They're, they're, leave, they're not getting educated as much as women are. There's a majority of women in universities now. Um, a lot of the, the, 
kind of a, there's a displacement of, of men. There isn't kind of an equal push for men to become stay home dads as there is for women to become career oriented. And so he finds that to be extremely like a dangerous because you're having men now without a clear place where they're needed. And there's such a shame associated with being needed. And I think that's, you know, as protectors, it's the, the kind of the, the things that a, that a father or a husband can bring. It's really being diminished. It's not, it's seen as not so significant or important. And then there's, but there's no alternative. There's nothing that's being given as a replacement. So. My sons say also say the same. They say the university, uh, because of only son, so only the, the so many girls get advantages, but the boys not, the young men not. So it's it's not healthy. And um, but I also think in the political or economical world, things have to change so that the fathers are not only there for making money. But, yeah. That's right. Uh, that's a really uh, very wrong, um, situa very painful situation for a man to uh, to be just there as to as a money maker and then have nothing to say. Home. That's not fair. And also from the so I think it's very important that politics and economy um, needs to change this. That uh, there is a family friendly. Um, I don't know, um, working hours or situations. So I think this is a very important point as well. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah. Yeah, because men, men are losing out. Like if, if you just devote yourself to making money and feel that that's good enough, then we're losing out on a kind of intimacy with our children, with all kinds of things that, that, that we're being shorted you know and and that's not good for that's not good for us as men it's not good for us as, you know as, as children as well so it's a, a support system for for men to be more engaged there, one of the organizations here that i i really like um it's called the dad project and what they've done is really they've gone into the schools to try to make everything more father friendly because everything is targeted to the mother coming to pta meetings to any kind of school events it's all it's all centered around around mothers coming and so so the guy who started it has gone to you know the los angeles unified school district he's gone to like the the ptas but how to make everything so it's much more inclusive and friendly and welcoming for fathers to join because many many of the fathers they show up and they're just really like fish out of water and they're not really you know, things are not really set up for them. It's not accommodating to, to men to be there. And, and those things have to change. It's amazing because in our schools, actually, this is par often parents coming at the parents' evenings and so on, it's fathers and mothers. Yeah. yeah, it's so great. It's It's just... You know, I think one of the one of the big divides now with technology is that kids kids don't trust parents because parents don't know as much as they do, you know, and that's really mm -hmm. been expanded by the by the internet. But also, like if you don't if you don't know if you don't have conversations with your kids and know what they're thinking about, what's important to them, what's valuable to them, they have no reason to respect their parents and to follow the advice of their parents because. They don't feel known and understood, and so we need to create more of that kind. You know, an emphasis on that, really, so that you know and understand your children, because they need to trust you. They need the guidance of parents. They don't need the guidance of YouTube um, and their and their peers. They they really need the the loving guidance and wisdom of parents. But right now, it's that's kind of being undermined by. A greater trust in the internet and and parents being too busy to get to know their their own children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, will you have? Uh, shall we? Shall we move on to the practical things? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we said we thought like eight minutes because. It's four speakers and uh, opening 
Welcoming by Maria Ri. She's not here today. She is excused because she's with her husband of a, on a trip and a very, very rare situation that they're going on a holiday together. <laughs> every, every two or three years, one time for a week, something like that. So she's not here this week. Uh, uh, but she comes back and she'll be there at the event. And she's also mother, grandmother. And uh, she will give opening remarks. And, um, Mrs. Um, Her Excellency, Mrs. Sabina, no, Susan, Irene Susan Nativa, Natividad from the Philippine Embassy. She will give opening remarks. And I don't know how long, but maybe three to five minutes. And then you'll be the first speaker. And after you, it's uh, Mrs. Ara Elkani. She's from the UNODC. She is from this family first program of UNODC, also very excited about family relationships because they experience if they help the parents in better communication with the children, then it brings so much difference. Absolutely. Good. She is even working in refugee camps and uh, with displaced families because still this much has such a great effect to help those people. She's in, based in Manchester, so she's not also not in Austria. But we met her, we talk, had a very nice talk, a very lively person. So she will, she will have a little bit longer because she's talking about a big organization. So I said, okay, 12 minutes for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, she's from UNODC. This is the, the UN body, yeah, the UN uh, department. And then we have the sister from uh, the Philippines, the president of Women Federation, and they have this program on reaching out to people and helping the parents. The first step is to um, to help them to have ideas how to communicate with each other. They started with the woman has to bring coffee to the husband in the morning, <laughs> cook, make a cup <laughs> of coffee for your husband. They have tasks, 12 ta each task each week. Very simple program, but very effective. And talking to each other and making a walk together and all these kind of things that they spend time together. They, they're not just working, working and then tired, but they consciously learn to spend time together and then also help them to uh, be more, spend time with their children and communicate with their children. This is the second part of the program. And they have done it and they are supported by the government, by the local uh, mayors or city uh, government. They're supporting this program. They're very grateful because those children, otherwise they, they are like homeless, even they have parents, when the parents are not uh, taking time to talk. And uh, the similar situation is the, our sister from Cambodia, Yuka Takahashi. She's a Japanese lady. She's been living there for 10 years with her husband from Cambodia. And she also started a program to raise awareness for parenthood, conscious, conscious parenthood, to take time to talk to your children. She says the family, many families are very poor. They go to work. They have to work sometimes outside of the city or outside of the home village. And then they come back tired and the children also try to work in an early time, and, but they get them influenced by society instead of by the parents. And so she's educating the government officials and parents to take time to communicate with the children. So all fits together in the same, goes in the same direction. And um, yeah, and then we have closing remarks by Caroline Hunt. I think you know Car Caroline said she remembers you from some time long, long time ago. You know Caroline? Oh, interesting. I'm not sure. She's. I don't know I'm... where she comes from. America. She's American, yeah, but she lives in Switzerland now. I think more than twenty years, many more than 20, 25 years, maybe. I think she was she in Los Angeles when she was in America. Yeah, this I don't know. I don't know her history. Do you, do you know anything, Lily, about Caroline's past? No, but her name was Moza before it was Hunting. Caroline Moza. Oh, yeah, you know, Caroline Moza, yeah. I'm not yeah, I, yeah I, I, if, I'm, if it's the person I'm thinking of, I think they were in Los Angeles and we met here. Mm -hmm. She has been, yeah, she, she said she can, all of a sudden she realized at one point she saw you. I think it was not a long time she spent there, but maybe a conference or a meeting or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. So, uh, and then we have Kyungin, you know Kyungin, 
Yeah. <laughs> she will be our MC again. So we're very happy. She's taking oh, on this difficult task, but she manages well in the did manage well in the past. So we will keep the fingers crossed and support her. She will do it again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Renata. Did you notice yeah. I'm here, Renata, or not? No, I don't think so, right? Sorry, I, I, I see you all the time in the car and talking to mm -hmm. someone. Yes, <laughs> sorry. I'm we sorry. Just, we just started, when, actually, just when you started, you came in, yeah? Sorry. Oh, okay. No yeah. problem, no problem. But you guys, uh, you guys look all very beautiful. Did you have a conference or something? <laughs> yes, Like extra, yeah. e extra formal. <laughs> yeah. I was at the embassy, at the Philippine embassy I visited today. I brought them some chocolates to. <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> and also, Patrick, nice to see you. I also like your look. This is the best. You like it? So, yeah, it's the best so far. You look a little bit like a like American professor, so that's good. That's the comment I get from everyone. You look yeah, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. No, and nice, nice to see you all. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice to hear you, Kyungin, your fresh voice. Melly, you want to say something? You were listening quietly. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm speechless because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is all very... Um, interesting to listen to because yeah i i don't know how to explain myself but uh because my father also left uh to work abroad when i was a baby and and then it was repeated me also i left uh when my kids are babies to to earn a, uh, a living so this is all for me some somehow yes. I have to put them like a you know like a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and it is very important for me to to listen. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. I I agree with some people who are saying that those who have a broken family, they are raised in a broken family, or their their parents are away while they were growing up it, it is um the, the kids grow up with an empty heart and they are more bound to to become like you know become uh they are they are fragile or they are uh ob, ob. You know this uh, or drug addiction or or uh, yeah. teenage pregnancy or become prostitutes or. But I am I am very very grateful. I don't know somehow, maybe the spiritual world protected me, but I I didn't experience all these things. Even though I'm I'm like in a in a hanging in 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 a. How do you say? Not a solid foundation because I grew up with uh, my my parents are practically away because my mother also is um, in the supermarket always selling things because we are seven seven siblings and so I I have a four uh, elder brothers who look after me but it is. <laughs> I think it's always different when you are left with with sisters because the the brothers they leave you alone and suddenly you are alone. <laughs> so I, I practically grow up like 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 them, no? In four 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 brothers ahead of me, and then I'm the fifth, and I grew up with brothers, and they look after me well. My father is away uh, in Guam, working as a uh, con uh, construction worker. And then my mother is always uh, selling uh, something, products from our land in, in the supermarket. She's uh, practically uh, away. And so I was left with my brothers. And then it, it is repeated with me also. When 
I have my family. I but my my kids are lucky because they are left with my my mother-in-law. So yeah, and I'm I'm very grateful for that. That uh, they also grew up. Uh, they, they didn't turn up like uh, drug addicts or they are very responsible. Yeah, and and my my the father also uh, served as a uh, a mother. No, but me. I am practically the breadwinner of the family. I lost my my mother um, this experience. The, the uh, it's a treasure to experience being a mother of your child, not to to raise them yourself. I think I think it is uh, very important, but I I I, I missed that opportunity. But luckily. Because I, I work as a nanny, so uh, I experience also looking after the kids of other families. So that is very rewarding, yeah. But I also see another another problem while uh, looking after the kids of other families because the parents are also away. They are uh, also practically away and earning a living for, for their kids. While their kids have a, a huge, uh, uh, timetable. Can you imagine? Little kids have already their their timetable are 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 very uh, tight, very tight. Uh, with six years old, it cannot be for me. Well, it, this is in London. Okay, the, the parents are working as executive director in different banks. The the father is uh, as, uh, in the Japanese bank, and then the mother is in um. American Bank. They are both executive directors. So when they leave home, practically I am the, the the one who is looking after the kids. I brought the I bring them to school. But well, sometimes the father also bring to school the uh, other kids. But I see it that uh, the the kids these kids are growing up like um, like the. They lost their, they don't have freedom to, to, you know, because they are very tired already. When, when the day, when the day ends, they are all very tired and they go to, to bed, very tired. So when the parents come, they just uh, give them a kiss, a good night kiss, and they are already sleeping. And then in the morning again. So, yeah, and these kids, yeah, I, I understand they are very prepared uh, for a career, but then I, I don't think they are, they enjoy enough their freedom as, as, as a kid to, to, to grow up healthily, like uh, to, to have a freedom to, you have time to, 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 to play, no? Because very early in the morning, they are already in school, so. Yeah, this is the Western society. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm very grateful for this uh, topic. Is I really want to to listen more, and uh, also I find it very interesting. Thank you very much for for this. Uh... Yeah, thank you for sharing, Melia. Uh, I think in in the in the Austrian society there is a, um, a realization growing for the importance of fathers because I think 20 years now ago somehow 20 years ago I think they started to have these parents for fathers also you could the mothers could stay at home from work for a certain time when the baby was born and to a certain age but then you can divide it even the fathers can stay home for one year for half a year there is a choice. So I think this, it's a, I see a lot of development since the time when I was young and now seeing young people with, with their children. I often see fathers with their children and I admire the patience they have. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> <laughs> a little, yeah. So there's some, some consciousness growing, but I think through this conference, we can really contribute to make, to, to whatever you do, Actually, if you don't work in the, on the family, on this to, to support the family, also to see it as a value, and 
Yeah, in, in everything, in the advertisement, it should be everywhere, yeah? That the family is most important, yeah? And that it's the most beautiful to have a family and to invest, be ready to invest in having a family. It doesn't come by itself. So mm. I think you can make a big contrib contribution. And um, and also it is interesting, I saw on the, on the side event program, they sent one around and there will be a finalized version. I can send it to all of you. Because these side events, we can attend any side event because there is a link and you can join. And the topic of family is several times. So it's not only us, it's a few times they really, uh, they have some uh, NGOs talking about the family. So it's also interesting because it hasn't been like that before so much, yeah, Irmgard. It's really coming, coming, coming on, yeah. You're right, yeah. Okay. And that also, it was not public. Yeah. Family yeah. not and also this this department of the UNODC with strong family and family first they are expanding they're really like explode they're almost exploding and uh, like 10 years ago like uh, uh, yeah maybe 11 12 years ago I was there was some very small leaflet and I thought where are they where are they I didn't find them for some time yeah so now they're also it's expanding yeah? so we can contribute. I mean, we, last year we had like 400 listeners with Facebook and Zoom. And also now we will start to, to send it around the invitation. I mean, when, when I have put the, the ambassador from the Philippines to it, we can send it around. You can also send it in your networks, uh, Patrick. Yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah, and we have a version for the uh, for the official version is already the direct link, but also we have another version with registration. So people have to register, but then we know that they are coming. If they register, then I have to send them the link. This is <laughs> it's not automatic. Yeah. It's automatic That's when it. I do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They ask for it's... direct link at the UN, but then we made a second version and we can yeah choose. Uh, to the to the embassies, I will send this direct link. They just they, because they if they okay they see it. Oh yeah, I want to join it, so it should be easy for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. So will you have a PowerPoint? I think to show some pictures also is nice. Okay. Did you think of making? Uh, yeah, I have thing. a PowerPoint, but it's 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 like. 50 minutes long so i'm going to have to go through and maybe grab a few grab a few That's pictures the, and and few slides yeah i think you can just put make a few highlights yeah because the whole topic yeah. is expand but you can make highlights and they will say okay mr ellison when can we see you again we come to your next conference yeah <laughs> just to get people uh, excited about it or, or uh, encourage them yeah, to be interested in this topic yeah? and go back That's home great. Where are the men, the fathers who can copy these conferences? Yeah? We, we sent them to you to be educated. <laughs> yeah, that's what we want. We want it to be rec replicatable. Yeah, you know. Uh, and really to expand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, your, the link for your homepage is on the on the flyer already, so people can. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Uh, on the homepage, so they can get informed about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what we will do. We also send it to we we send it to all our networks of women federation because then they can also forward it to others. And this is in, now it's international, 140 countries. So <laughs> yeah, it's so exciting. Yeah. So you know, Emma been... Emma Emma Reed from Women's Federation in Los Angeles. So she came to the FatherCon. Ah. So she came. So she's been very supportive. So it's great. Okay. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. This cooperation. Yeah. yeah, that was actually my question. Can we evolve? Uh, can we evolve the Women's Federation in America or in your local area that they also can invite people to the event? Yeah, they. Emma, Emma's been very supportive. Yeah, so she has. She's attended the last two father, father cons. Actually, she may have even come to the first one. Um, yeah, so she really wants to. She really wants to have Women's Federation be more engaged. So we actually put. Um, the Women's Federation logo as a sponsor now on the website. We could in, uh, send to oh, Angelica Castelle uh, the invitation. Yeah, no, also, yeah, she can send yeah. it around in the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
but you also you feel free please uh, patrick to send it to whoever contacts you think might like to yeah, I will. participate there yeah. and lily we have to pray for lily and tony cook will help us will help yeah i sent him today so he confirmed so there will be two technical persons and this is very important yeah <laughs> so true <laughs> the computer doesn't explode the zoom link doesn't explode <laughs> and are we all very disciplined <laughs> and if i can get the powerpoint a couple of days before or any other presentations or media that we want to use it's good to have a couple of days before okay great yeah 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 Definitely. i'll do that you know, they got a lot of footage we actually had uh you know, a, a professional director from Hollywood came and he and they, week, they filmed and interviewed before. people. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is... yeah. I don't know where that came from, but yeah. Jung in, Jung in, Jung in suggested a week before. I said a couple of days. But anyhow, I mean, any media that we have, we can also use for promoting on Facebook. I mean, you know, little snippets here and there and posting it and connecting and say, oh, and by the way, come to and just another reference to the conference. We can we can do that, things like that as well. If you're posting on on your website, we can also comment on your content. Or if you, for example, tag Women's Federation Europe in your post, then we can tag you in our post and then, then spread the by the, the contact yeah that's excellent yeah we'll do that so it's it's women's federation europe WFWP. or wfwp yeah okay this is facebook mm -hmm. yeah so yeah so i use we use facebook and twitter somewhat linkedin I use a lot now and instagram and then we set up for FatherCon, we set up a TikTok account, which TikTok I have issues with, but um, but there is kind of a, a market there. So we may do like some short, short little, you know, 30 second videos that you can post on TikTok. I haven't done anything with TikTok. I heard that they've got a good um, avatar program for, for make a friend of mine got a really nice picture of herself. And I thought, <laughs> okay, I want to get in there and get an avatar, but I, I just can't get into it. <laughs> No, I know. Me too. It's and it's the good, bad, and ugly. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, okay. I think I'm going to have to go. I got another class coming up. Yep. Um, okay. Nice to see you. I'm so grateful to you, you guys, and um, we keep you updated about any changes, and we start advertising. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah. Thank you very much for taking the time. Oh no, I got I got cut off and I can't hear what you're saying. Oh. You got muted, yeah. so we didn't hear anything you just said either. We just we're just rounding off and saying all the best, and we'll keep in touch. Yes. Ah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Somebody called me on the phone and it cut off my sound, so now I. Can't. Ah yeah 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 yeah. yeah. No, we just say goodbye and all the best, Patrick. All the best. Thank you. We stay connected. See you. Don't Take worry. care. Stay healthy. Bye. I think. Bye bye. I'll, I'll close the meeting. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs>